Okay, guys, I don't normally stand up when I'm posting videos, but this one's a doozy. Um, instead of doing a poster, actually, kind of, hold on, let's bring this, there we go. I actually made this a while back when I was first... This is the Texas Killing Fields slash I-45 killer case. Let me get my head out of here. I made this. This is a map, 12 victims, and these are victims not mapped on this map. Um, let's see. Are these victims on this map? All right, this case started, uh, the Texas Killing Fields is a 25 acre patch of land in Lake City, Texas, situated a mile from the interstate, Highway 45, thus the other moniker. They were all between the ages of 12 and 25, similar hairstyles. Um, And I have a list of all the victims, which I will get to. Huh. <coughs> and some suspects. Um, I just want to show you this first. Instead of making a poster for this case, this is what you got. Now, I'm going to... Gonzalez, Jane Doe, Kimberly Ray Pitchford, Georgia Greer Brooks Bracewell, Colette Wilson, Nina Klug, Rhonda Renee Johnson and Sharon Shaw, Debbie Ackerman and Johnson. Um, these are the victims that I had. Oh, Laura Mill. Laura Miller and Laura Smither. I added. Um, okay. Okay. Um, you can see the names over here that aren't on the map. Uh, okay, we have Allison Craven, 1972. Because I believe he started in the 70s. Michelle McGarvey, 1982. Suzanne Bowers, 1979, Heidi Villarreal, Phi, the type of name, 1984, Audrey Cook, 1986, Donna Prudhomme, 1991, Lynette Bibbs, 1996, Tamara Fisher, 1996, Crystal Baker, which was solved, was a different killer, 1996, Jessica Kane, 2016. So, um, again, I'm going to keep my head out of the way and talk to you about it. Um, it's been described as a perfect place for killing somebody and getting away with it. Um, just so you know, I'm here. Let me... Okay, Brenda Jones. This is... go through the list. She was 14 years old. She was last seen in Galveston on the 1st of July 1971. Her body was found in Galveston Bay near Pelican Island the next day, July 2nd. Colette Wilson was 13 in Alvin, Texas, same area. Um, June 17th, 1971, her body was found in November. She disappeared on County Road 99 and Highway 6 after she was dropped off by her band director, her body was found five months later near the Attic's 
reservoir near the body of Gloria Gonzalez. Okay, why the heck would a fan director drop a 13-year-old off in the middle of, I, I don't understand, but anyway. Rhonda Johnson, 14, Webster, Texas. Again, this is all in the same area, in the Galveston area. August 4th, 1971. Three years to the day before I was born. Her body was found January 3rd of 72. She was last seen walking with Sharon Shaw along Seawall Boulevard in Galveston. Her skeletal remains were found in a marsh near Clear Lake. Yeah, she and Sharon were found together. Sharon Shaw is the next one. Also, she was 13. <coughs> Glory Gonzalez was 19. Um, she was last seen near her apartment. Her severed remains were found near, oh boy. I guess that means she was possibly says severed. So, does that mean that this poor girl was dismembered? Anyway, Allison Craven, 12 years old, in Houston, disappeared on November 9, 1971, Chris Jericho's first birthday, and was found on February 25, 1972. Her mother reported her missing after finding Allison disappeared from their apartment near I-45 after finding partial remains early on they recovered the rest of her body in a pure land field three months later, ten miles away from her home. Debbie Ackerman, 15, disappeared on November 15, 1971. Her body was found November 17th. Last seen accepting a ride near an island ice cream shop with Maria Johnson. Her body was found bound and partially nude in Turner's Bayou along with her friend Maria. Again, we have right there. This is why I wanted you looking at this, because otherwise it's a mess. Okay, and there's Maria, 15. Okay, Kimberly Pitchford, 16, right here. Uh, from Houston, she was taken January 3rd, 1973. Her body was found January 5th, 1973. Last seen at Dovey High School. She was there for her driving test. Her body was found in a ditch. Suzanne Bowers, age 12, from Galveston, May 21st, 1977. Her body wasn't found until March 25th, 1979. Last seen walking between the 4,000 block of Avenue S to the 3100 block of Avenue P at 10.45 a.m. Her skeletal remains were found in Alta Loma. Brooks Bracewell, 12. Her and her friend Georgia Greer, right here. Um, Dickinson, Texas, same area. September 6, 1974. They were found April 3rd, 1981. They were last seen together, her and Georgia Greer, at the U Totem convenience store off of former 517 and I 45. No, FM 517 and I 45. Her remains were identified along with Georgia Greer's in an Alvin, Texas ditch. Georgia Greer was 14. Michelle Garvey, 15, from New London, Connecticut. June 1st, 1982. Oh, we talked about her. She was um, unidentified for a long time. Um, she was not identified until 2014. Uh, yeah. I didn't put them all in here. Uh, I added these two, but six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Anyway, you can see how close these towns are. Um, I'm going to dedicate this one to my mom because we worked on this together. Um, Sandra Rainbow, or Rainbow, was 14, Santa Fe, Texas, uh, October 26, 
three and um, her front door was left open, food in the oven, her purse and coat was still inside. Um, she has not yet been found. She was 14 years old. Heidi Villarreal Five is 23 years old, League City, Texas, October 10, 1983, found April 4, 1984, last seen at a convenience store located off of West Main Street and Hobbs in League City, Texas. Her remains were found in the 3000 block of Calder Road after a dog brought her skull to a nearby house. Laura Miller, 16, League City, Texas. She was last seen at a payphone to call her boyfriend. Her remains were found 60 feet away from where police had found Heidi Villarreal Fye the year before. The murder of Laura and Heidi and five other women and girls, including two unidentified female murder victims, gave infamy to Calder Road and the fields surrounding it. That became the Texas Killing Fields. Uh, Audrey Cook, age 30, Galveston, Channel View, Texas, December 1985, found February 2nd, 1986. She was discovered in a field in the 3000 block of Guess Where, Calder Road, alongside Laura Miller. Coroners estimate the woman was 22 to 30 years old, 5 foot Um, the woman had a small caliber gunshot wound to the back. She was identified in April of 2019 along with Donna Prudhomme via genetic genealogy via family tree DNA. Shelley Sykes, 19, Texas City, Texas, May 24, 1986. Last seen leaving her job as a waitress at Gato's Beach Point Restaurant in Galveston. Her car was found the next day stuck in mud, blood-stained, and abandoned on the side of I-45, I-45 Access Road, south of the Galveston Causeway. Her family believes police found a white blouse that belonged to her after one of her convicted kidnappers, Gerald Peter Zwarst, drew them a map of where to find her body, but she still has never been found. Suzanne Renee Richardson, 22, of Galveston, October 7th, 1988, last seen at her job as a night clerk at the Casa del Mar condominium at approximately 6 a.m. Other than witnesses hearing a woman screaming and a lone shoe found in the parking lot, she has never been seen or heard from again. Donna Prudhomme, 34, Nassau Bay, Texas, circa 1991, found September 8th, 1991, discovered in a field 3,000 block of Calder Road. Um, and then she was identified. Lynette Bibbs, 14, Houston, Texas, February 1st, 1996 to February 3rd, 1996, last seen at a teen club with her friend Tamara Fisher and a 22-year-old male companion who claims to have dropped them off at a motel on Old Spanish Trail in Houston. Her body was found by Tamara's off the side of a dirt road near Cleveland, Texas. And Tamara Fisher was 15, same circumstances. Um, okay, Crystal Baker, she was actually the great niece of Norma Jean Baker, uh, otherwise known as Marilyn Monroe. Um, <laughs> Marilyn, uh, and then this girl looked like Marilyn, but they figured out who killed her. I think they got DNA. So she's not a part of this. Uh, Laura Smither went for a jog. Or is this Laura Smither? Laura Smither. In Friendswood, Texas, April 3rd, 1997. Her body was found April 20th. I actually had her parents on my radio show. Unfortunately, that episode they decided to delete. <sighs> Stupid blog talk. Uh, they started the Laura Recovery Center, a nonprofit organization that aids in the search and recovery of kidnapped victims. Now, a William Lewis Reese was convicted of the murders of Smither, Jessica Kane, and uh, Cox. I don't see Cox. Where's Cox? Anyway. Um, Todd Harriman, 
Allen, 57, of Le League City, Texas. She's a lot older than the rest of us. July 12, 2001, after mapping a route between League City and Corpus Christi to search for a new home, Tot was last seen driving her 1995 Lincoln Continental along Highway 35. Neither she nor her car have been found. I don't think she's a part of this. I think she drove into some water somewhere. Uh, Sarah Trusty, 23, Algoa, Texas, July 12, 2002 to July 27, 2002. After leaving her Algoa home during the evening hours of the day, she was last seen riding her bike near the Algoa Baptist Church. The next day, her bike was found in the foyer of the church. Fourteen days later, her body was found in the Texas City Dyke by fishermen. Teresa Van Gas, 16, Dickinson, Texas, Halloween 2006 to November 3rd, 2006. Last seen walking near the Green K subdivision on Halloween night. Three days later, her body was found strangled, raped, and with her hair cut off in a field across from Dickinson High School. Okay, there are several suspects <coughs> in this string of murders. Michael Lloyd Self. Um, he was a convicted sex offender. He worked at a ga gas station. He was from Galveston. Um, he was at least a suspect in the murders of Rhonda Johnson and Chad Shaw. After hours in of interrogation, he confessed to the murders. Of course, he did. Um, self is a he's he's tough tough to. He was a bad dude, but I don't know that he did this. Um, three years later, in 1976, um, as a matter of fact, his his discrepancy was, I mean, his um, confession had so many discrepancies, like um, the victim's clothing, the date of the murders, the location of the murders, how they were killed, and various other things, so, so he's kind of ruled out. Three years later, in 1976, Don Morris and his deputy, Tommy Deal, were arrested and convicted of various crimes, including torture and other misconduct against detainees. Morris was sentenced to 55 years, with Deal to 30. After this, Self regularly applied for appeal, but was rejected every time. Michael Self died in, on December 21st, 2000, still in custody. It was only after his death that a number of police officials, including the former Harris County District Attorney, stated their belief that Self was wrongly convicted. Actually, he's not the guy I was thinking of. He wasn't a bad guy. Uh, Michael Lloyd Self was actually a guy that was of somewhat lesser intelligence, and the police were horrible to him forced him to confess, and he had a final appeal on Unsolved Mysteries. It was horrible. Uh, watch it. So I apologize. He wasn't a bad guy. I, I was thinking of someone else who was a, a Texas, let's see, is he listed here? I think I had this thing down. I'm, I'm trying to see if he was listed here. Um, that I see, but anyway, okay. Edward Harold Bell, he's a pretty bad dude. Um, he was on Unsolved Mysteries as well. He, <coughs> uh, he lived in Dixon, Dickinson, Texas, near where two of the girls, Brooks, and Georgia were killed, but yeah. Um, he killed a Larry Dickens, um, which was, was on Unsolved Mysteries because they were trying to find the dude. Um, he ran into a woman's house, she almost killed him. Um, <laughs> oh gee, what a loss. Um, and uh, that would have been, you know. 
Anyway, I believe he died in prison. Anyway, excuse me. <clears throat> he was also a silent partner of a surf shop. He knew two of the victims, Debbie Ackerman and Maria Johnson, who frequented the surf shop. So he's definitely a viable suspect. And he liked to expose himself to children. Yeah. Bad dude. Oh, crap, what was that guy's name? Um, he was a... Ah, he's probably already in jail. Um, okay. Mark Stallings, in 2013, Mark Ronald... Mark Roland Stallings, a convicted kidnapper serving a life term, confessed to killing a girl in 1991 and later dumping her body in the fields. Later identified as Donna Perdone, at the time of the murder, Stallings was living and working in League City and was near the homes of some of the girls who went missing and were later found dead. Despite the fact that his testimony shows great consistency with the details, he hasn't been charged with any murders yet, but remains a suspect in the murder of Donna Prudhomme and Audrey, in the murders of Donna Prudhomme and Audrey Cook, as well as two unrelated murders in Fort Bend County. Clyde Hedrick. He was named a suspect in the 2022 documentary series Crime Scene the Texas Killing Fields. Hedrick was released from jail in 2021 after serving eight years for the, for the death in 1984 of Ellen Beeson, age 50. He once said he had murdered four to five women. Oh, by the way, Edward, Edward Harold Bell says he murdered 11, and he called them the 11 who went to heaven. There's a whole documentary about the 11 who went to heaven. Uh, okay, Crystal Jean Baker. Um, her killer was found by DNA, found on her dress. And his name was Kevin Edison Smith. He was sentenced to life. Uh, hmm. Okay, Shelley Sykes, which I didn't talk about. Okay. William Lewis Reese. In May 1997, William Lewis Reese was arrested for the kidnapping and attempted murder of 19-year-old Sandra Sprague from Webster, Texas. The following year, he was found guilty and convicted, receiving a 60-year term. In 2015, his DNA was matched to the killer of 19-year-old Tiffany Johnston, who was found murdered in Oklahoma in 1997. After this revelation, Reese confessed to killing Jessica Kane and Kelly Cox, leading the investigators to the body's burial sites. He has been suspected of kidnapping and killing Laura Smither, and confessed. In 2016, the Friendswood police say he did kill her. In 2021, release, Reese was convicted of Johnston's murder and sentenced to death. The following year, he was extradited to Texas and was convicted of the murders of Smither, Kane, and Cox, receiving a life term after pleading guilty to each of the three murders. Um, So, the Texas killing fields are not all one killer, but there seems to be more than one serial offender. Now, over here I have a list of the known victims, I-45 by date. Um, Well, but I'm not going to do a read all. I'm just going to show you right here again. Um, okay, we have. Let me see if I can. Uh, oh, my goodness gracious. <clears throat> In the Sea of Water, here's Baytown right here. Some of the places that we talked about. Oh, Sugar Land is right there. Um. Creek. So 
you can see we're all down in the Galveston Houston area. Um, I don't have a phone number in this case because there's more than one case here. Um, as you can see, freezing. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this different style of video. Um, it was necessary to do a different style of video for this. Um, so I think there's more than one serial killer at work here. I think Texas Killing Fields was the guy that was convicted on the ones that were all put in that field. I think the I-45 killer is a separate killer. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Um, I don't know why I don't have Kelly Cox here anymore. But anyway, I'm going to take this off of here. Um, thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Sit back down. <laughs> there we go. Ah, uh, it's too low. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I am way too far in. Yikes! There we go. Um, God bless you. This here. Um, and I'll see you next time for a more ordinary video for Mercurus March. Uh, oops, let me. No, I want it over here. I want to be. There we go. I want to be over on the side because I want room for posters. In this case, I didn't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, please click subscribe, click like, click the bell for notifications. And comment. Let me know what you think. I really am interested in your your feedback, both on how I did this one and your feedback on the cases. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Probably one of the longest videos I've made on this channel. Bye, guys.